There's a quote from the 18th century romantic poet William Blake where he says that the busy bee has no time for sorrow. So with that in mind, I wanted to ask the question, can unhappiness be cured through productivity and working? Productivity is one of those words where like, we know that we're supposed to be productive, but at the same time, there's this entire hustle culture that's been built up. There's this idea that you need to be on the Sigma male grind set and you need to be grinding every second of every day and you need a side hustle and you need to be hustling and constantly working. Or it's like whenever you talk about working, usually people are talking about working their job, working their career, which they may not be passionate about and I'm not really talking about any of those things. So whenever I'm asking the question, is productivity the cure for unhappiness? What I mean when I say productivity is growing in the direction that you desire, achieving your goals, working towards those goals, that sort of thing. And when I say your goals, again, these are goals that are defined by you. So if your boss comes in and he slams a coffee cup on your desk and he says, I need that report in by Friday, that's not what I'm talking about. So we're bringing back Noah's dictionary. Again, whenever I'm talking about productivity in this context, I am really just talking about doing work that you care about. And then whenever I'm talking about unhappiness, is productivity the cure for unhappiness? I'm not referring to like major depressive disorder or something like that. I think obviously if you're struggling with something like that, that will play a role in your unhappiness and you should seek out help. I'm not saying that you should just work and uh, just put your head to the grindstone and just keep on grinding away if you're you know, absolutely miserable. If you struggle with that like I do, then please seek help, seek the resources that you need. Don't just try to grind away and be on the Sigma mill grind set 24 seven. It's not gonna freaking work. So whenever I'm talking about unhappiness, I am talking about a sense of meaninglessness in your life. When I say unhappiness, I am talking about dissatisfaction. Essentially the kind of unhappiness I'm talking about is more of a general lasting unhappiness. And that's why I'm using the word unhappiness as opposed to sadness, because in my mind, sadness is something that's more temporary. It's like happiness, something that is fleeting, whereas unhappiness is a persistent and consistent feeling. The idea of unhappiness to me has always struck me as something that sticks around. It's like if you get a rejection letter, then you're sad. But if you get a thousand rejection letters and that's all you've known for the last year, you're unhappy. So with our definitions in place, let's revisit the question, is productivity the cure for unhappiness? Or a better question might be, is productivity a cure for unhappiness? And honestly, I think that the answer is yes. I think that productivity can be a cure for unhappiness. These are some very basic ideas, but I think obviously if you're working towards something and you are making progress towards those goals and you feel a sense of momentum in your life, then I think obviously you will feel eager to accomplish your goals as opposed to just feeling unhappy. If you get up every day and you have a reason to get out of bed, you have a reason to stand up from your nice, warm, cozy bed and to run away from the dreams that you've been having and to enter into the cold and cruel real world. Obviously, if you have a reason to do that, then I think that you're going to feel something. I think you're going to feel some kind of excitement that will make you want to move and progress. But the problem with what I'm describing is that in these scenarios, you are eager to get up out of bed because you have a reason to. So what if you don't have a reason to get up out of bed and you're unhappy because of it? I think that unhappiness can be a symptom of not having a reason to get up out of bed. So if you don't have a reason to get up out of bed, if you don't have a clear goal or a desire or a want, if you don't have anything that you wanna to progress towards, what you do. I don't believe in productivity for the sake of productivity, which is to say I don't believe in doing work just for the sake of doing work. I don't believe in busy work. I don't believe in working on something just solely so that way you can do something, especially if it doesn't have any effect on your life or on the lives of anyone else. And quite frankly, I think that if you don't have a reason to get up out of bed in the morning, and if you're trying to force yourself to do something that you don't care about just to be doing something, I think that's going to make you worse. I think that's gonna make you more unhappy because I think that is a really important core part of the human experience is you kind of have to care about certain things and you kind of have to know what you care about because people will come along all day long and try to get you to care about certain things. But the fact of the matter is that um, you just don't care about most things. And I don't mean that in a nihilistic sense. I mean that in a mathematical sense. Most things are things I don't care about. So what I mean by that is I'm sorry, but I don't care that much about your eighth favorite sandwich topping. I just, it's just not an important or relevant piece of information to me or my life. And it's like, what do I care about? I care about my family and my friends and my goals and the things I'm working on. I care about making videos. I care about writing my novel, I care about all of these things. 
but I'm not gonna lie, I don't really care about the license plate number of some guy in a random city in Illinois. And if that's a weird example, if you're going, why would you care about that? I wouldn't, that's my point. That's my point, is it's a random piece of information and I don't care about it. So you don't care about most things. And the reason I share that is because what is valuable to other people oftentimes is not valuable to you. Just because someone else has a goal, that doesn't mean that their goal should become your goal. If productivity is the cure for unhappiness, it can't just be random productivity. You can't just do things for the sake of doing things. If you ask someone to give you a goal or to create a guide for your life, then you can follow that for a bit, but sooner or later you have to find your own reasons for caring. And caring about doing something can take on a multitude of forms. You can care about something because you personally enjoy it or like it. You can care about something because it matters to someone who you love or care about. You can care about doing something just because you said you would do it and you're prideful like that, which is fine and cool. I definitely feel a sense of urgency whenever I've said that I would do something. Um, or really, I just feel a sense of urgency and, and anxiety, really, just any day of the week. But I think sooner or later, you have to come to your own conclusions about the goals that you want to pursue. So I think the natural question to ask at this point is, how do you figure out what goals to have? How do you determine what direction to aim your life in? And really, that's up to you to figure out. I can't give you a guide. No one can give you a guide. As I was saying, people can give you goals, they can try to direct you, they can try to include you in their plans, but ultimately it will make you happy unless you choose to be involved in their plans. It will make you happy unless you choose whatever it is they're trying to push onto you. I think that your goals have to be your choice, otherwise it will just feel like they're obligations that you are having to complete for the sake of completion. I mean, if you genuinely have no clue what to do for a goal, then helping people is always a good goal. And quite frankly, even if you do have a good sense of your goals, that's not a bad thing to keep in mind, you know, that you should try to help people. Because I think people are good overall. I think that the evilness of people is greatly exaggerated. I do think there are very, very, very bad people out there. But I think most people are good and are just trying to make it through life. And I think that most people, if you do good to them, will do good unto you, basically. I think they'll follow that golden rule. So as I was saying, I, I don't think that just choosing a random goal will make you happy. But I think that choosing something, you know, even if you just kind of think it could be good, I think that doing that and working towards that, I think that will only bring about beneficial results. If you don't really have any goals, that you think that you might be into art, then it's worth pursuing that. Whether you like art and therefore you want to become an artist or whether you just wanna search up new art, find new artists, learn history about it, whatever. I think if you just have an inkling of where to go, then I think that it's worth pursuing. And I think that there is something in the chase. I think there's something in the movement that makes you happy. Or at the very least, I think that focusing on a goal, moving towards it, working towards it, even if you don't accomplish it, or even if it takes a very, very, very long time to accomplish it, I think that just moving towards it will give you some kind of fulfillment that will tide you over. And so I think that's where the William Blake quote comes in. The busy bee has no time for sorrow. Because at least speaking from my own personal experience, there have been times when I've reflected on my life and I've sat around and been sad about my circumstances. There are times when I've been sad about not accomplishing enough or having failed somehow somewhere, or having made a mistake. But the thing is that those thoughts really only kind of come whenever you're sitting still. And I think it's important to rest. I think it's important to take your time in evaluating your opportunities and in choosing them carefully. But at the same time, I think that resting, I think that just lying there, especially after you know what you should do, I think that just doing nothing after you've chosen your goal, I think that will bring about unhappiness. So as I was saying, there have been times when I've looked on my life and been very unhappy and sad about where I am. But then the thing is that as you start moving towards goals, again, the busy bee has no time for sorrow. So if you're working and you're focusing on those things, then you literally won't have time to be sad. You won't have time to be unhappy. And so I really think that's what William Blake is trying to say with that quote, that the busy bee has no time for sorrow. You literally just don't have the time to be sorrowful if you're constantly working. And again, when I say working and when I say productivity, I do not mean just working for your boss and just giving away your labor or whatever else. I mean working towards your goals. I mean doing things that you want to do. For me, that's working on projects, going to the gym, making videos, writing, I mentioned all this. 
And obviously for you, I think that your definition of productivity will be different from mine. So if you want the short answer to the question of can productivity cure unhappiness? Again, the answer is yes. I kind of said this at the beginning, but I think that if you are working towards a goal and you're putting all your time and effort and energy into it, then you will literally be moving too quickly to like catch, catch feelings, I guess. That's not really how people use that phrase. Um, when I say catch feelings, I mean feelings of sadness and malaise. And again, I don't mean clinical depression. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about misery like that. Again, I'm going to repeat myself, but if you're feeling those things, please seek help, seek treatment, like go to the proper resources. I'm, I'm dead serious. But I think that if you're feeling sad about your situation in life, like I was about, you know, 20 minutes ago before filming this, then um, I think that moving and just trying to do something is a good start. And at the very least, it will get your mind off of the sad and unhappy feelings. So with that in mind, knowing that working can get your mind off of sad or unhappy feelings, you have to ask the question, are you dealing with these feelings in a positive manner or are you running away from them? Because I think people run away from their problems all the time. You know, there are countless memes about it. And so uh, ideally that's not what you're doing here. If you're feeling bad and you choose to work, ideally you're not just shoving down those freaking feelings and repressing them and keeping them down like a trash compactor or something, because that's unhealthy. I think it's a bad idea to repress anything like that. I think it's a bad idea to repress feelings. Uh, to quote William Blake again, sooner strangle an infant in his crib than nurse unacted desires. And so basically with that quote, what I think William Blake means is just don't spend all your time thinking about things that you're not going to do. Don't dwell on ideas if you're not actually going to commit to them. Don't dwell on ideas if you don't find them helpful. If they don't help you progress or move forward in some way, shape, or form, and again, this is by your own definition, not your bosses or anyone else's, but if your ideas or your thoughts don't help you progress, you don't have to listen to them. And I'm not saying to be delusional, not at all, but what I am saying is that if you have the same thought for the 50th time in a row that you're worthless or you should feel bad about yourself or you should be unhappy, you deserve to be unhappy or something evil and horrible like that, you don't have to listen to it. And so I think if you're worried about repressing those feelings, I think that's kind of what you have to do is just acknowledge them and acknowledge that they're wrong and then act in spite of them. Move forward, work towards your goals, work towards what you care about and what you love and what gives you life. And lastly, I wanted to share this experience that I've had lately that kind of connects to what I was just saying. We all have 24 hours in the day. And one thing that I kind of realized when I was trying to break some bad habits is that if you just do other things, then you literally won't have time for the bad habits. So for instance, I would just like lay on the couch and just look at memes all day. And um, that's not a good freaking way to spend time. That's not a good way to spend your life is just looking at memes. Half the memes aren't even freaking funny. More than half aren't even funny. It's just a bad use of time all around. And then I kind of hit a point where I was like, okay, I can do anything except get on my phone and look at memes. And then it's kind of amazing what happens whenever you do that. Like if you just say like, I'm going to fill my time in some way that isn't this. Because again, there's a limited amount of time. So it's like, you just kind of have to run down the clock. But the thing is that if you're very conscious of your time and if you're aware of how you're spending your time, then you're actually going to be spending your time in much better ways than if you were just completely ignorant of those facts. And so, yeah, there are absolutely days when I look back and I go, dang, I wasted so much time today. But on the whole, I think that I certainly spend my time in a lot better ways than I used to just because I am aware of that fact, aware of the fact that I was wasting too much time on looking at memes. And so now I try to use my time in better ways. But the point I'm trying to get across is that you have a limited amount of time to work with. And so if you can just fill your time with good things as opposed to bad things, then you'll be better off, basically. You'll be much happier. And so as I was describing with time, I think you can do the same thing with thoughts and thinking. Again, you can't really control your thoughts all the time. You can't control your thoughts 100% of the time. Sometimes thoughts just show up. Sometimes depressive feelings, and I'm hesitant to use that word depressive, because I think that depression and sadness are conflated when they really shouldn't be. But I certainly think that unhappy feelings can show up and I think they show up for all of us from time to time, sad feelings, sorrowful feelings. I think that oftentimes we can have these really bad thoughts, but I think that the way to deal with them is just to think thoughts about other things, such as thoughts about your goals and thoughts about moving forward and thoughts about being productive by your own standards, doing what you want to do. Again, the busy bee has no time for sorrow. So if you are able to fill your mind with good thoughts as opposed to bad, unhelpful thoughts, 
then I think you'll be better off. And again, all of this takes practice. It doesn't come easily for anyone. It doesn't come easily for me. And that's what I'm doing with this video and with all the other videos I've done is I try to talk about things that I've learned and try to share my experiences with them and hopefully it helps someone else. But I still struggle with these things. And so that's why I'm making a video to try to focus on it. At the very least, if I ever get lost then I can just return to this video and I can just go, oh yeah, here's the freaking perfect guide. I made it for myself. Maybe not perfect guide. No, it is perfect. It is perfect. Everything I do is perfect and beautiful and, and wonderful. Yeah. I'm in a bear costume because um, this is a video about sadness and unhappiness, so I thought it was fitting. thought it would be fun to wear a bear costume, but it's very hot, actually. Um, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend wearing a bear costume in, you know, 90 degree Texas. I mean, at least not during the summer. So to conclude, is productivity the cure for unhappiness? I think it's a cure. I think it can help. Maybe you just have to look at it as one of the many tools in your tool belt. Being productive, I think that can help keep the unhappiness away. And again, I'm making it sound easy, and I know this video is gonna be what, like 10 or 15 minutes maybe. Probably not 20, hopefully not 20. And again, all of this is very streamlined, and I've tried to do my best to outline it in a way that is simple and easy to understand. But the fact of the matter is that everything that I'm talking about is a process. The process of coming up with goals and deciding how you should move forward in life is something that is ever changing, I think. I think our goals are ever changing as we move closer to them. I think that our goals change day to day and I think that we even question our major goals sometimes. But I'm gonna go ahead and say, and I've said this before, that you shouldn't drop your goal. You shouldn't drop everything that you're trying to accomplish just because you're a little bit discouraged, but rather you should only drop it if you find something better. If you're going to school to be an architect and then you just decide you actually want to be a fisherman, then you can drop your architecture goals then. I mean, I don't really know if being a fisherman is profitable in this day and age. I don't really know how you get started on that or if you have like, if you start off with like a canoe and then you work your way up to a big deadliest catch ship, or maybe you just have to start out with the deadliest catch ship because your, your dad's a, a crab man, a, a crab person. So he knows the crabs. He lures the crabs onto your boat and then you, you they're his friends, but you eat them anyway. Leave a comment down below if you would eat your dad's friends. But really, all this is a process. I think that being productive is a process. I think it's something that you just have to kind of work on. It's different for everyone. Something I struggle with is setting lofty goals for myself and then burning myself out trying to achieve them, which I don't recommend. But again, can unhappiness be cured by productivity? I think at least for a little while. But again, there are 24 hours in the day. So let's say that you're unhappy for all 24 hours. If you're able to take your mind off that and if you're able to focus on being productive and working on your goals for just two of those hours, that's a huge improvement. And so you're a little bit less unhappy, right? I mean, if you have to choose between being unhappy most of the time as opposed to being unhappy all the time, being unhappy most of the time and having those periods of joy, I think it can be worth it. So anyways, I hope that I have made my point clear. Uh, I hope that you guys aren't unhappy and that you feel good and happy and joyous and carefree and uh, like beautiful unicorns running in a field. I was actually feeling quite depressed and unhappy before I started shooting this video. And I, I was just kind of feeling not so great. Um, it's been a long day, but for the last, you know, 45 minutes or an hour, I've been working on this video, I've been shooting it and I had to set up the lights, I had to set up my camera and um, I don't know, feel a little bit better now. So I guess William Blake was right that the busy bee has no time for sorrow. So anyways, um, give it a shot. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. Have a nice night. Bye.